Windows at Liberty takes place in 1838 at Liberty Jail in Liberty, Missouri. The title refers to windows, even though only one window is depicted. The second window is the window of revelation, which is represented by the light shining on the faces of the prisoners. If you're going to pick a single image to represent how they responded to Liberty Jail, what happened there in a single image, I don't think showing one where Joseph is crying and feeling like he's lost hope really represents that. He hadn't lost his faith. He hadn't lost his hope. And I wanted to show that even though he was physically in prison, his mind was free. Revelation was coming. He, he was not in prison in his mind through depression or despair. You have revelations like this. You're getting a view of eternity that's way beyond the walls of the jail you're in. And the people with him were that way too. Hiram Smith's son had been born while Hiram was imprisoned. He first saw his infant son around February 1st, 1839, when he was brought to Liberty Jail by his wife, Mary Fielding Smith. It was there that Hiram blessed the infant and named him Joseph Fielding Smith. Lyman White was a member of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles. Lyman was nicknamed the Wild Ram of the Mountains. He was a colonel in the Missouri Militia and a counselor to Joseph Smith. On the way to Liberty Jail, Lyman was told that if he did not denounce the prophet, he would be shot the next morning. To this he replied, shoot and be damned. Alexander McCrae was the tallest man in the jail. He stood at six feet, six inches tall in his stocking feet. It was said of him that there was not a cowardly hair in his big, red, shaggy head. Later, he became captain of the Nauvoo Legion and went west with the saints. He served as a bishop in Salt Lake City for 36 years. He was so affected by being in Liberty Jail that he never allowed anyone to even keep a bird in a cage in his house ever after that. Sidney Rigdon was witness to many notable events of the Restoration. Sidney beheld a vision on the degrees of glory with Joseph. He was a counselor in the First Presidency at the time of the imprisonment. Sidney became very ill at Liberty but he was such an eloquent speaker that he was able to convince a judge to release him after only one month. Caleb Baldwin was born in 1791 and was the oldest man in the group. He was a veteran of the War of 1812 and a faithful member who participated in such notable events as the Battle of the Big Blue River in 1833. During this time, Caleb was pulled from his home and severely whipped, leaving scars he would carry for the rest of his life. His house and barn were also burned to the ground by the mob Caleb went west with the saints, but died nine months after his arrival in the Salt Lake Valley. These were strong men who uh, faced this trial with courage. Again, how you face difficulties in trial tells you something about a person. And in some ways, for men of action like these men were, to not be able to take any action, to just be hearing reports about the saints being driven out of their houses and people, you know, leaving their blood trail of their bare feet in the snow. That was what bothered him the most, as he says, not being able to be out there and to help. They weren't focusing on themselves. They were seeing beyond the, the walls of Liberty Jail to the trials of the saints and to the future and what, what future the future would hold. The theme for the overall feeling of the painting was based in part on the following quote from the Prophet Joseph Smith regarding the period. Quote, During the time we were in the hands of our enemies, we must say that although we felt anxiety respecting our families and friends, who were so inhumanely treated and abused, we felt perfectly calm and resigned to the will of our Heavenly Father. Yes, that still small voice which had so often whispered consolation to our souls in the depths of sorrow and distress bade us be of good cheer and promised deliverance, which gave us great comfort. For although we were troubled on every side, yet not distressed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed. I think it sends a message to us that in our own lives when we're experiencing really hard things, whatever those are, if we look past that to eternity and say there, there's more to life and to eternity than what is in these four walls.